we have all the leverage. Welcome back to the Team 12 Seattle Seahawks podcast. I'm your host, Team 12s. And today we're going to be talking about how Jamal Adams wants an extension and how the Seahawks are trying to negotiate it. So I don't have any insider information. I'm just basing this off of what I think should happen and what I think will happen. So to start it off, let's go with what Jamal Adams wants and what he will likely get and maybe at the most potentially get. Jamal Adams wants $20 million because he sees himself as a pass rusher, as a safety that does pass rushing stuff, which he does. He and he can do, and he has done, and he's proven he can do by breaking the sack record. He should have gotten double digits. He did not. If he didn't miss those two games or those three, four games, easily gets somewhere in the, I don't know, low uh, 13 sack at the most range. Out as a safety, that would be well, that would have been pretty sick. But at the most, he's gonna get 18 million at the least 16 million and what i think it'll end up being is a good middle at either 16.5 million or 17 million the way the whole like safety market goes is the next guy to get paid um that's good gets paid 500,000 more than the last guy so jamal adams is setting up to be paid around 16.5 million 17 million at the most he'll get 18 million because Seahawks love the players that are really good and sometimes we overpay a little bit but that's the only way I see that happening and to the leverage side of things we have all the leverage contract negotiation ne negotiations speak the best I can't speak right now I'm gonna reset two seconds one two when when it comes to the negotiation side of things we have all the leverage. All the leverage uh, means that the team that has all the leverage or the player that has all the leverage going to get what they want. Seahawks don't want to pay $20 million. Seahawks don't want to pay $18 million. They will pay around sixteen or $16.5 million because their leverage is if a player uh, pushes his way out of town in two towns in the first couple of years of his career, no one's going to want to give a first round pick plus to get that player then pay them 20 million not happening not gonna cut it never will happen never has probably has i'm my i just probably can't think of it at the moment but um not gonna happen then second we can just franchise tag them franchise tag for a safety is 10 point i think it's 10.4 million uh just pay him, just, and you can franchise tag somebody up to five years in a row. So franchise tag him three years in a row. You're basically getting that long-term deal. He won't like it, and that's why I think we're going to get a deal done. But you can just franchise tag him. Ten million, way below, like, that's average market. You're getting a top five safety at, at, uh, at, bet, at worst on your team for, for ten million. Yes, please. So, at, at, at the worst case scenario, we franchise tag him, he tries to hold out, we say, nah, we can't trade you, no one's going to accept you, because you forced your way out of two, you're going to be forcing your way out of two towns, stay here. And if he does want to get traded, and it does happen, then he's going to want to put tape, good tape of his coveraging out there. And even if he stays with us just one more year, that's still those two years that we don't have the first round pick. And we had, we're having a Hall of Fame safety in his prime on the team. That's why I want him to have the extension because he is at a Hall of Fame trajectory, and he's a great player. And he fits our, he's not a perfect fit to our defense, but he's he's a good fit if we use him properly. So that's why I think we will not be overpaying, and that we will get a normal deal solid deal and that Jamal Adams will not be getting 20 million insane amount of money uh short video but tell me what you think I haven't filmed in over a month and a half I've just been busy with 
I was busy with school for a little bit, and then I, I'm busy with baseball right now. I'm having tournaments on Thursday, everyone's here and there Friday, then Saturday's usually a doubleheader, then Sunday's based on how we do on those games, we play on Sundays. And then Tuesdays I have baseball practice, and Mondays and Wednesdays I'm usually, I'm probably going to an outside family member during I would uh, the times that I would have baseball practice on tu this during the time I would have baseball practice on Tuesday, but on Monday and Wednesday because we don't have practice on those days for rest reasons. And um, yeah, but I I'm out of school, so I have those in middle hours where I'd be at school to wake up slap myself in the face, th throw some water at my face, hop in the pool, get back out, take a shower, do my hair, throw this on, take the headset, that probably made a bunch of noise, I'm sorry, um, and start filming. But tell me what you think with the new, with the, uh, with an actual mic right here, you can't see it. Um, I hope it sounds good. I'll bump up the volume if it sounds bad when I'm editing. And, um, but... I'll have a link in my description for my Discord, and it helps way more than you think if you like and subscribe, and it always, it, every time I see one more, it's like, oh, I better keep getting on it, on my stuff and make more videos, because it's, it's like a little, a general, it's a little happy spike, just, oh, subscriber, but, uh, yeah, it helps more than you think, and just have a good rest of your day.